Hello folks, welcome to the first session of Organizational Behavior, Understanding Organizational Behavior and Tracing the Evolution, Part 1. I'm Dr. Abraham Sirlaisek, I'm here uh, Assistant Professor at the School of Business, IIT Guwahati. So as the first lecture, as I've already introduced you to the topic in the introduction video, first lecture will always look into how it originated. But before this, as it's a practice in all my lectures, I start always with a quote or a word or a phrase. So this time, it's individual differences. What do you mean by individual differences? We many a time hear that differences are there within individuals, differences are there within the groups, but they all came to a consensus. So suggesting or taking a cue from that, individual differences are known to exist in any system. And this makes the entire organization more robust. Many a time here that it takes all types of people to make the world. From that point, I would like to start today's session, which is tracing the evolution. Now, if individuals are different, they also behave differently. This behavioral pattern has raised many a time differences in opinions, differences in understanding, difficulties in analyzing this behavior, etc., etc. So we tend to understand this from an intuitive perspective. That is when we get wrong. So we basically we go into a situation where we look into systematic study. Systematic study is nothing but introducing the topic, understanding the interactions or relationship between different elements, different actors associated with it, trying to understand the cause and effects or trying to attribute the causes and effects of those particular relationships and finally making conclusions which are based on scientific evidence. So I'll just like to add on this. Systematic study. So systematic study as we have seen is where we try to understand the relationship, attribute those relationship to different causes and effects and trying to make predictions based on the available scientific evidence. Second, we also try to look into from an evidence-based perspective or evidence-based mechanism. Let me ask you a simple question. Now, when we used to get fever, we used to go to a doctor, he would prescribe a medicine. But during the COVID times, you know, fever was the first symptom. So if you visit a doctor, it is very hard to get a, even a paracetamol. So basically new evidence has come into picture and based on those scientific evidence available, presently with the doctors, they tend to make decision. How is management different? Management is also a science. So this is where evidence-based mechanism comes into picture. Evidence-based mechanism looks into the available scientific evidence of the present day scenario and tries to bring up solutions. As we commonly say, modern day problems require modern day solution. And this is the reason why we bring evidence-based mechanism into picture. Now, having seen systematic study and evidence-based uh, mechanism in management, we also don't discredit, we also consider intuition. Intuition is where you have a certain gut feeling that this is how it is going to happen. So every single decision in terms of organization is based with respect to these three elements. Systematic study, evidence-based mechanism and intuition. Amalgamation, a combination of all these three mechanisms will show that any behavior displayed by individuals in the organization is having a consistency and that consistency could be captured with these mechanisms. So basically we are trying to understand organizational behavior where there are individuals who behave in a different way, individual differences persist, but we are trying to see consistency and we are trying to predict organizational behavior. So this is where I would try to invoke Fred Luthens who had said that Organizational behavior is basically to understand, to manage, and to predict 
individual behavior. So that's the introductory note for today's session. Straight away moving into today's session, we'll introduce the concept of organization. Now, we know the organization is a term which we loosely use for any set of people, group of people who have a common objective. Now, tracing that, we look into some of the thinkers, Max Weber, the German sociologist who looked into bureaucracy, looked into rationalization. He says that a uh, organization is a social entity that is rationally organized and coordinated to achieve specific goals and objectives. Now, uh, Chester Bernard, who is also an American theorist, says that a system of consciously coordinated activities or forces of two or more persons, something which is very particular is two or more persons achieve specific goals, coordinated activities, coordinated objectives, right? So specific goals, coordinated activities, two or more persons, we tend to see these functional words getting repeated again and again in their definition. We'll also look into what our Henry Fayol has to say, a group of people working together to achieve common goals. Now here also it is very particular that a group of people is coming into picture, a common goal is coming into picture. Now Carl Wig is of also a similar opinion where he gives sense making structures that help individuals make sense of their environment. So this is more of the SOR, stimulus operation th that is happening where individual is behaving with respect to an external stimuli. And finally the management consultant Peter Drucker says that an instrument for turning resources into results, quite intriguing. Whatever resources it is available with us within the organizational context, how we are changing it to results, that is what makes an organization existent. So these are some of the earlier understanding of an organization has evolved. We now see that a lot of work structures, different work from home techniques, different organizational structures, so social contracts, organizational contracts have changed or I will use the term evolved. So based on that, we'll see that an organization is specifically a consciously coordinated social unit, a consciously coordinated social unit. It could be such that that there is a group that has come up together to form a particular, has established around a set agenda or to establish or achieve something. For example, an organization of, uh, let's say, a couple of people to take up an activity or let's say a college festival or it could be a technical event or it could be a political association where the intention is to grab power or there will be a set of collective people who have come to oppose somebody else or there could be a set of initiatives where you have come together to establish a, a scientific organization to build rockets or let's say an organization where you have made your existence into the world of education where you are trying to include more and more people into the uh, purview of education or an organization where you are uh, closely associated with the people from a, a separate sect or a separate religion. So all these are organizations but it is consciously coordinated social unit. Now hardly Hardly there will be any organization that has happened randomly. There could be some instances where ideologies bring together people. There will be instances where uh, objectives bring together people. But mostly in an organizational behavior context, we see that organizations are consciously coordinated social unit. Now, it is composed of people. We are not looking into the brick and mortar. We are not looking into... The, the infrastructure, organization is essentially established by its people, by the individuals, by the employees. You know, we'll take any example. Let us take an example of any corporate. It is known by its people. Let's say any, any Tata company, any, any Reliance company, or any, any company that's associated with a, a government PSU. Every organization is known by its people. So organization is made by people. It is composed of people. Now it functions continuously. Organizations are not something which is formed for an agenda. It is made and disposed of. No, that would be groups, that would be teams. But organizations work consistently, work continuously. This is what makes organizations exist. This is what make organizations thrive. This is what makes organizations 
critical. And finally, the main agenda behind any organization is to achieve common goals. So all the definitions which you are seeing from Weber uh, to Fayol, everything is earmarked by common goals. There is some mutual objectives which we are looking at, which we are stating specifically in the vision and mission of an organizational structure. This is what organization is all about. So that makes us understand what organization is specifically. Now coming to, now coming to organizational behavior. Organizational behavior, as I've already mentioned, is to basically understand, manage, and predict what is going to happen or what is going to happen with respect to individual behavior. Now, let's look into what behavior is. Behavior is the internally coordinated responses. Very critical functional word, internally coordinated responses, which could be actions or inactions of whole living organisms, individuals or groups to internal or external world stimuli, internal or external world stimuli, excluding responses more easily understood as developmental changes. Quite a few words, very much intriguing uh, definition. Let's break it down. Let's break it down and understand word by word. I will try to make it very simple. It's an internally coordinated response. That means behavior should come from a internal uh, motivation. It should actually happen with respect to internal response. But then actions or inactions. Sometimes inactions are also actions. I repeat, sometimes inactions are also actions. I remember that there was a statement by one of our earlier prime ministers that why you generally don't take an action on something. Basically, his words were quite interesting. Not taking an action is also an action. So sometimes we see in organizational context, in the context of life, in the context of our setup, uh, in terms of work culture, in terms of what we are involved in everyday, day-to-day -day activity, organization, uh, internal responses, in, it could be inactions, also be a response to the external stimuli. We can also definitely have actions. So basically it is internal coordinated responses of whole living organisms. It could be individuals or groups. Now behavioral tendency is something which is very critical in terms of individuals as well as group. Now let me take an example. The way one person behaves in two different contexts is different. Similarly, two people performing in the same context is different. I repeat, let's take a person, let uh, his name be Ramesh. Now Ramesh performing in a context A and context B is different. Similarly, let's take two people, John and Smith. John and Smith performing in the same context is also different. Now this is something that has not anything to, got to do with the behavioral per se, but also the context. So you have to understand it from the individual or as well as the group behavior and also to internal and external stimuli. The context also is critically relevant when it comes to organization. Let's look into the further part, excluding responses more easily and understand understood as developmental changes. Developmental changes are more slow. They are more ontogenetic. They are controlled by the genes you are made up of. So basically, if you are looking into any behavior, it might not come under the developmental changes purview for the simple reason that those are literally uh, slower changes, those are literally guided by your genes, ontogenetic. So in other words, behavior refers to how an individual or group acts when it is interacting with others, as simple as that. How me, you or any other person is interacting with any other individual is behavior. Now I'll also give an example. Let's say Every single individual, this is what makes organizational behavior interesting. This is what makes the behavioral part in organization typically interesting. Let us look into any situation we are in. We look into every other individual. We see how they behave, how they react, how they respond to different stimuli. Please introspect within yourself. From this moment, 
every move you are making to the outside world you are either focusing on somebody looking into how he or she is reacting to a external stimuli this is what makes behavior interesting this is what makes organizational behavior more critical and more relevant now let's look something look into something which is more scientific how kurt levin has simplified the model of human behavior individual's behavior let's assume it as b is a function of the person p including their personality the persona is important the personality and motivation and their environment which includes their physical as well as social surroundings now this can be broken down to a simple equation b is a function of p and e p is the personality of the individual and e is specifically the environment but easily said than done what we have to understand is that personality could be made of different traits different attitudes different personality different dispositions etc again motivation motivation could be intrinsic could be extrinsic sometimes i go to a food item because of intrinsic motivation because i'm hungry sometimes the food becomes so attractive or food is so tasty right so i go to that food because of some extrinsic motivation because that food or the, the caterer or the person who is serving them is well known well reputed for the taste so i'll go to him so basically this is what motivation is it could be either extrinsic or intrinsic also we are looking into environmental environment could be the context you are in you are in an organizational setup very rigid very strict in terms of let's say you have a, a mobile no use policy so basically you have to surrender your mobile phones or let's say there are companies which actually uh, mask your cameras and cell cell phone cameras etc when you get into the organization so that could be a policy where you are you are looked upon on a basis of speculation on a basis of doubt so those are situations where you don't have a uh, a freedom so this environment or that context modifies your behavior otherwise cool person you are or otherwise a person who is very jovial uh, uh, very much excited and very much extrovert you are you tend to be uh, in a restrictive mode you tend to keep restrained over things which otherwise you would not have because of the environment let's look into the same person let's let's take an example of a person anuradha who is coming into an organization who who is supposedly very introvert shy etc but seeing the organization a flat structure within the organization there is hardly any any hierarchy any bossing around that is happening then people tend to be uh, she tends to turn her behavioral pattern into something different so organizational behavior is quite dynamic as i have introduced the topic i have al already mentioned individual differences it takes all types of people to make the world but to see the consistency again going back to the first point to see the consistency we have to look it into from a evidence based perspective we have to look it from a systematic angle where you tend to look into the relationship the associations try to attribute it to the causes and reasons and then predict it based on the available scientific evidence so this is what Kurt Levin says behavior is a function of your personality as well as environment interestingly i will also tend to repeat environment when it comes to personality it is both personality as well as motivation now what do you mean by environment in physical surrounding it could be such that social surrounding i have already clarified with respect to the person you are you are in an environment which is more democratic more uh, consultative more interestingly active it brings the uh, uh, different person inside from within you and you change all together but let's look into a possibility where you are in a work condition which is very hot humid uh, very difficult to work in such situation it could be the physical surrounding there too you will have a change in behavior so environment does not mean that it is only associated with your social surrounding it also has a implication to your physical surrounding now coming to organizational behavior as a discipline it 
has different dimensions, but I would say it emerges into a common body of knowledge. I repeat, it emerges into a common body of knowledge, which is organizational behavior. Let's break it down. Let's break it down to behavioral science contribution, unit of analysis output. It heavily takes from psychology. It heavily takes input from psychology, where the contribution comes in learning, motivation, personality, emotions, perception, training, leadership, job satisfaction, individual decision making, performance appraisal, attitude measurement, employee selection, work design, stress, etc. So it heavily contributes or takes the contribution from psychology where you look people from a closer angle. You look into the personality, you look into the individual differences and tend to appreciate it. Again, you look into the social psychology angle, you look into the social angle, all the behavioral change, how interventions can change attitude, what is the difference of what is the process of change in communication, what is happening in group decision making process, what are the different stages of that, communication, power, the, the quest for power, the power distance, every single cultural perspective, conflict, sorry, intergroup behavior, all these aspects tend to make you to look into the unit of analysis from a group angle because you are more concerned with the social psychology angle. In psychology, you are more focused on the individual perspective, but in social psychology, you are more looking into the group perspective. Now comes the sociology angle, where people are more concerned with organizational theory, organizational technology, the contributions are culture, the change. So basically the unit of analysis becomes organizational system. It looks into a macroscopic viewpoint. It does not take the microscopic viewpoint of psychology. Sociology contributes heavily to organizational behavior from a more of a macro angle, which is organizational technology, organizational change, organizational culture. It also comes or takes heavily from anthropology, where you look into human-human interaction, comparative values, comparative attitudes, cross-cultural analysis, organizational culture specifically, and even organizational environment and power. This is where individual specific comparison takes a back seat and organizational comparison bring, comes into the front seat. So again, the, the unit of analysis becomes organization system. That's how the study of organizational behavior as a discipline has emerged over time. Now comes organizational behavior. Let's understand organizational behavior in a very crisp and clear manner. It's a field of study that investigates the impact that individuals, groups, and structures have on behavior within the organization. This is something which is very intriguing. Investigates the impact of individuals which are seen, individual behavior, how it is creating differences, how it is creating, you know, bringing out change in terms of the solutions that is required. We have also seen the, the involvement of groups. What about the third element, the structure? The structure also, the knowledge about structure also gives us an idea on how organizational behavior is emerging. We know the person, let, let's assume we know person A. He is in a, working in an organization B, but we are unable to understand the organizational structure C then we are in a position not to actually establish the contribution of organizational behavior, how organizational behavior is actually getting affected within the knowledge scenario or within the organizational aspect. So this is where structure also becomes relevant. So it takes a macro aspect of macro viewpoint of organizational structure on behavior within the organization. For the purpose of applying such knowledge towards predicting and improving an organization effectiveness. What is the end result? What is the end goal? The end result is simple. I am studying the individual, I am studying the group, and I am studying the structure for one simple reason, that how I can take my organization from level A to level B, from orbit A to orbit B, how to increase the efficiency and effectiveness of the organization. That's the core reason why I'm actually involved and interested in studying in what individuals are, what or how they behave, what is their 
predisposition within the organization, how they are evolving within the organization, what is the learning pattern within the organization, how they are emerging in different scenarios, how they are reacting to different stimuli, how they are coordinating or in terms of cooperation, how they are, how groups are formed, what is the cohesion, what are the different stages that the organization is displaying in terms of group formation, how is the team dynamics that is happening and what exactly is the structure of the organization, how the structure is formed and how the structure is adding knowledge to your organizational effectiveness. So all these three aspects, individuals, groups and organizational structure, how these three are contributing to organization effectiveness makes the study of organizational behavior all the more critical. Let us come to small matrix which looks into the theoretical and applied angle as well as the macro and micro angle. In organizational theoretical and applied angle, we look into organizational development which is more applied but on a macroscopic viewpoint. We look into organization from a very large angle. We look it from a very macroscopic viewpoint that we don't consider individuals. When you are looking into organizational development, the key is to look into the structure, the design of the organization. Individuals are sure a part of it, but the focus is mainly on the organizational structure, which is more applied which is more macroscopic in view. Now let's look into human resource management, which goes hand in hand with OB. Many uh, big schools don't have even a, a distinction between OB and HR. They have, they, they call it OB HR. So basically human resource management critically looks into the applied aspect, but again, as in case of OB, it is more microscopic. It looks into individual, how uh, the recruitment is happening for a particular individual, for the organization, how a particular individual is behaving during a training. All these aspects are certainly micro, but they are more applied. OB, on the other hand, is more theoretical, but before coming to that, we are looking into a macroscopic viewpoint of organizational theory, which is more, the uh, more theoretical, but rather macroscopic. Organizational behavior, on the other hand, is highly theoretical, but it is also microscopic. So my concern is individuals. My concern is how individual will perform within a group. My concern is with respect to the group performance within an organization. I am not so bothered about the macroscopic angle, but as an organizational behavior theorist, I would like to look into the individuals, their predispositions, how they interact, how they mingle, how they act to responses. Let's look into a scenario where you are bringing in, uh, let's say, Sheila, an individual who is coming to an organization for the first day of her life. So she, she sees the organization structure. Uh, she sees that it's more of a hierarchy that's happening within the organization. But what makes her more comfortable is with respect to the work zone, with respect to the workplace. There are individuals who are highly motivated. There are individuals who are uh, more extrovert, more ready to help, more ready to, you know, help you out in your first day. So this makes organizational behavior all the more relevant. This makes the life of Sheila more critical, more enjoyable and not the organizational design in that context. So that uh, completes our first lecture of organizational behavior. I would just like to summarize one thing. Every single individual is different. It takes all types of people to make the world. That said, organizational behavior is something which is very critically understood from the behavioral point of view. And behavior cannot be easily understood because it could be random. That said, we cannot leave random behavior stating that, okay, we cannot measure it. We have to use a systematic approach and systematic approach means that we are actually looking into the different available associations or relationship. We are trying to relate it with different causes and effects and how to predict it from the available scientific evidence. Also, we look into evidence-based management, which looks into the recent available scientific evidence. Based on that, we tend to predict the behavior. I also try to uh, like to uh, you to recollect the example I gave in terms of COVID. 
scientific, new scientific evidence coming into picture means that you have to take a decision based on the new available scientific evidence. So, modern problems might require modern solutions. So, basically, the evidence-based management becomes a second angle. That said, there is always an element, there is always an element of randomness and unpredictability that will come in human behavior. That is where your gut feeling, your intuition will help you. So, a combination of these three things will help you to get to what is known as organizational behavior. See you with more details of organizational behavior in the next class. Till then, take care. Goodbye.